So now we're going to value common stock. We just previously looked at how we take a valuation on preferred stock. Now we're going to look at how we do this with common stock. Now, one of the, the features of, of common stock right, is we have to look at dividends. right? Dividends, they are not legally obligated to provide dividends. There's a number of companies that do not pay dividends. Uh, these are normally younger companies, but they, they just don't decide not to pay a dividend. They provide most of the value to capital appreciation um, for their shareholders. Uh, so then the other things we look at is that, you know, they, yes, they, they have dividends, and that's where you have a, a lot of your gain from owning the stock. Um, but then the other things we have to have is that there's, there's generally there's no maturity on common stock, right? Y the time doesn't come to the end where it's like, oh, you have to sell it back. Okay. Now, with it, regard to this, is, is that common stock is basically the riskiest way to finance a company uh, because shareholders are the last, one to get, last ones to get paid out okay? because it goes in the order of bankruptcy court is that bondholders get paid first, then preferred sh shareholders, and then whatever's left at the end of the day, which when most companies declare bankruptcy, there's not much left over for common stockholders. So common stockholders tend to get wiped out here. Okay? But one of the benefits that we have of owning common stock, benefits for the, uh, the, the, sh the stockholder, uh, not necessarily for management of the company itself, but is we have uh, control. Okay? Is that if I own common stock, is that I can now have a vote as to how my company is going to be ran. I can, all right, so when we look at stock valuation, there are some things that are going to be common among all the models that we're going to look at. Okay? And so these are just going to be some terms that we're going to introduce. Um, one of which is P, right? We've seen this a number of times before, but P is generally going to refer to a price. Okay? D or DIV, div, these are going to refer to our dividends. Okay, the P, as I said, is price. Then we're also going to have here a G, which is going to stand for our growth rate. Okay, which is just basically going to be how fast the dividends are going to grow, how fast we think this company in general is just going to grow. Okay, and the last one that we're going to introduce is R. Okay, we're going to put this R sub S. And this is basically the required return on security S. So this is saying, what is the actual amount in order for me to own the share of stock is that I have to have adequate compensation for that risk. Okay? I take on more risk, I get more compensation. Okay? So a riskier company should have a higher return. And that is de delivered through this R right here. Okay? And in later, some later lectures, we'll actually look at how we derive this. But for right now, we're just looking at that required return is based solely off of what investors require. Okay? Now, each of these, at least the, the P and the D, these two right here, we're going to give some of these some subscripts. Okay? And what a subscript is, is it's going to be something that looks like this. We'll see P sub 0. We will see P sub 1. We will, and then all the way out to P sub T. Okay? We will actually put out here a hat on top of these, and that is the Greek hat. And so basically what we're saying here is that this, a sub-zero means that we have a price today. So this here says this is what the price is today. This is what we're looking at in the market. P1, P hat 1 here, this is basically saying in one time period, in one year, what is our price going to be? What do we expect? So when we see a hat, this is us saying our expected. Okay, this is our expected price in that time period. And that's what we see out here is that this is our expected price in time period T. Okay, and that's just defined at the end of the term. Okay? Uh, we have also on the P's, we also have them on our dividends. So we have D sub 0, D hat 1, all the way out to D hat sub T. Okay? And we just use these subscripts to note when we're actually receiving them to make it easier for us to, to plug our numbers in and make sure we get the right exponents on our time value of money formulas. Okay? Uh, 